Couldn't attend NAB 2018? I was there for you and got a bunch of great interviews with VR professionals, so let's get to it. You are listening to the How to Create VR podcast, weekly conversations with VR professional creators, designers, and producers. Hello and welcome to another episode of the How to Create VR podcast, where I speak with professional creators, designers, developers, and producers who work on VR, AR, and MR projects. I'm your host, Marcelo Lewin, founder of HowToCreateVR.com, where you can learn how to create VR experiences by listening to our podcast, attending our monthly meetup, and reading our blog. This episode is a bit different than my regular ones. On April 11th and 12th, I attended the NAB 2018 conference. This is a conference where content creator professionals go to find out what's going on in the industry, what are the current and upcoming trends, and it's a great way to meet and network with your peers and other professionals. The show covers every aspect of media creation, including broadcast TV, indie filmmaking, corporate video, podcasting, and this year, they had a pavilion dedicated to immersive media. That's where I hang up most of the time, interviewing some great VR professionals. What follows are four interviews. My first interview is with Dewey Nguyen from Yi Technology. They make 360 degree cameras, including a $17,000 camera which had 17 lenses. You heard me correct. I was able to hold that in my hand during the interview. Of course, I was a little bit nervous because I was very scared to drop that puppy. Luckily, I didn't. My second interview was with Nick Mullican from Sferica. We talked about his stabilization system for 360 degree cameras, which also held that $17,000 camera during our interview. My third interview was with Andy Teal from Blueprint Reality about their VR streaming software. And finally, I had a really nice chat with Lara Haves, a VR producer from Sunny Boy Entertainment about producing high-quality VR projects. These interviews were shot with a 360-degree video camera, and then the audio was exported for this audio podcast. You can watch the actual videos by visiting howtocreatevr.com. You are in for a treat, so let's get to the interviews. I'm here with Dewey. Right? With Yi, is that how you pronounce it? Uh, it's like Yi, almost like the, e? the letter e, e, t- e. e technology. So you don't go Yi, just E. e. Mm-hmm. All right, perfect. And Dewey, what do you do with E? Um, so I'm in operations and, and I'm in customer success. In uh, customer success. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So okay. I do customer service, sort of corresponding with uh, customers to see where the problem areas are with our products and make sure that the development teams know. Got it. Um, we, we update the apps and firmware. Well, let's talk about your products real quick. I mean, you guys offer a variety, and you guys can look around here. It's obviously we're shooting in 360. Mm-hmm. Uh, look around, you offer a variety of 360 cameras, right? Yep. Yep, definitely. This one looks extremely impressive. It's like a spaceship or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. this is our... our so what's uh, this one? Let's start with the top of the line. So this one's our Yi Halo. So this was our big unveiling last year in uh, the 2017 NAB. Okay. And so what it is is... A 17 camera rig. We have 16 all the way around. Wow. And then Can we one... pick this up or no? Yeah, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, $17,000. Just be a little 17, careful. 17000 yeah. It's plugged in? Oh, yeah. yeah, it's plugged in. No, no, no it's totally fine. Yeah. Just, just, just want to make sure I don't drop $17,000 <laughs> here. Um, yeah, yeah. So only check this model, out. <laughs> this is how many cameras? 17. 17. Mm-hmm. All right. Now, I noticed, uh, do you have cameras? You do have a camera pointing up and I'm assuming there's one for down? There's nothing on the bottom, right? Okay. So the best way I like to explain that to, to people who ask like, why don't you have something on the bottom? Let me put this down first. Yeah, I don't yeah definitely. To... <laughs> um, we need somewhere to mount it, right? So if someone's got to hold it or some, you got to place it somewhere, right? Right. But the best way to say it is when you're in New York or you're in some big city, right. wh- where are you looking? Are you looking up? Or are you looking down at the right. street? Yeah. Right, yeah. You're looking at skyscrapers. You're, yeah. You want to have that full stitch to make sure that the coverage is there and there's no lines on up there definitely on the top. So let's talk about stitching because you got 17 cameras Mm -hmm. here, right? I mean, is this like 15 seconds of a video is going to take overnight to stitch? I mean, that's a lot of stitching. So actually, um, so with the partnership with Google, what we did is, um, I don't know if you, I don't know if they can actually see it, but I'll tilt it up. You can pick it up and people can just look around. Yeah. And uh, in these uh, 17 slots, definitely there's one more right down there. There's um, micro SD cards. Uh, what you will have to do as, an, uh, I guess, a content creator yeah. would be to remove it and put it into like a hard drive. And what you'll do is you'll use the Google Jump Assembler. You'll send these 17 videos up to the cloud. Got and it. Google will send you a one a stitch one together. Yeah. So, so, so you don't have to worry about stitching. I mean, yeah. Google will take care of the yeah. stitching for you, do the best kind of stitching. Exactly. So, yeah. like the, the, again, the partnership. Uh, right. 
we, we specialize in the hardware of the yeah. products. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And again, they're, they're just a big company and they, they, they're they really good with the they're software. They're focused on the software, right. right. So we integrated and we optimized with what they have in their, their, their jump assembly. Yeah, yeah. All right, so this is truly for like the high end, you know, people that are totally into, you know, uh, doing this professionally. Exactly, yep. Um, now let's step a little bit more uh, down the line. Mm -hmm. We're doing, hey, hi, we're doing a recording right now, but I'll get back to you in a minute. Uh, let's talk about um, a little bit down, uh, and by the way, everybody, that's going to be my next interview, Nick Malukian, that's right, and you've got a production, so that's coming up right after this. Um, so you've got others, right, that yep. are doing 360. Uh, what, are you, what, what are we talking about? What kind of models? So this one, we actually, is the 180, but if you drop down right behind you here. Um, so right here. This is our 360 camera. So people can follow, people will be following along here. So, oh, oh. so again, we have the two lens system. All right. Marcelo's just setting things I, off. Here. I just uh, set it all off, man. Um, so again, it's Let's a. Let's move back over here. It's a two lens system, yeah. and uh, again, the camera's gonna come with the tripod mount on the bottom, a okay. case, the camera, and a, a re rechargeable battery. And what's the price on this? Uh, Three ninety nine. And uh, what does it shoot? Four K. Four K, and then four um, K if you do in camera stitching. So it's gonna be four K thirty frames per second. Oh, per for video in camera stitching? Yep. Oh, pretty cool. Um, say you're doing live streaming like this, right. again, it's going to be 4K. Too. Okay. So it's, right. it's a really nice benefit to have that. Got it. Um, if you're an individual or a creator who knows how to stitch it together, yeah. um, it can now actually output at 5.7. Oh, wow. Yep. And then you have 5, and then you have 2.7. Yeah, just have. Do you provide your own stitching software, or does it have to work with like color? No, so you, we, we have one available on our website at D-Technology, and it's a stitching program to help, I see. help out. And this is $399. $399, that's correct. Okay. So you have obviously a bunch in between um, for this kind of stuff, so uh, perfect. If people want to find out more about E? Yeah, head to our, our official website at yitechnology.com, or um, right now um, on retailers, we're available on Amazon, our official store, Got and it. we have some on AliExpress too. Well, great to meet you. Right, thank you. Thank you. I'm here with uh, Nick, and Nick, how do you pronounce your last name? Malukin. Malukin. I was just want to make sure I didn't destroy your last name That's there. That's all right. No You're originally from Russia. From Russia. That's right. right. And you own a company, right? A production company. Yes. Uh, so uh, this is Ferica, where virtual It's very cool to uh, Well, it is. It is. And uh, uh, well, I can talk about it for, for a long time, but uh, <laughs> I, can, I can show you or send you videos to show Definitely. to your audience. Yeah, yeah. This is, once you see the difference it makes when the camera moves in virtual reality, this is, uh, I'm sort of trying to make it a standard, to push this uh, as a standard for virtual reality industry, which well, it lacks standardization. Well, virtual reality in general lacks all sorts of standards, right? It's, There's uh, no standards yet. Yeah. 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 Well, it's evolving, right? It's, we're at the beginning of the industry, Absolutely. which is a wonderful thing. Yeah. Let's talk about, well, Setting first of all, nice. you have a company, right? What's your company name? Uh, so the company name is Sphirica, uh -huh. and we are a virtual reality studio uh, producing content for clients and also our original content. You virtual reality 360 cinematic virtual reality and uh, we're also virtual reality lab uh, working on things like that stuff. yes so hardware solutions for uh, basically moving the camera different types of uh, movements in virtual reality so we're Great. talking about rovers uh, drones cable cams uh, steady cams for 360 solutions etc I see so let's talk a little bit about movement right because when you put on an HMD you know, when you move it and you're looking at it in a phone, it's one thing, but when you put it in oh, an yeah. HMD, you really have to be careful how you move the camera because Absolutely. people will get sick. So what are some some things you've learned? Obviously, you've designed this, so what are some of the things you've learned mm -hmm. um, not to get people sick when moving the camera? Yeah, uh, it's a good question because as you remember, in the early days of virtual reality, the uh, sort of rule of thumb was never move the camera. Yeah. So it was the uh, virtual reality producers who were asking uh, all the creators to, to follow this rule. Which was, uh, I think, a mistake because we actually never followed this rule and broke it from the very beginning. So from early on we understood that uh, virtual reality is such a great uh, medium with such great potential and although this amazing world, 360 world around you is uh, is a truly uh, engaging, immersive, and uh, absolutely new experience. If yeah. it's static, it doesn't work. Right. So I mean, you get bored quite, uh, quite quickly. So the camera needs to move. Once the camera is moving and it hasn't uh, the hardware stabilization, you lose the, uh, the level of uh, the horizon, and you naturally feel sick. So this right. is not the way to go. 
Right. Uh, another option was to to apply software stabilization, but that's the problem when you lose uh, picture quality. So the solution is the standard way uh, Hollywood production has been working for decades. It's hardware stabilization. They apply it uh, whenever they they produce films. So it's the solutions like. Uh, Again, cable cams, camera cranes, steady right. cams, right? Like so this. it's all hardware stabilized. That's yeah. the standard for the traditional film. Right. So why not bring this to virtual reality? But the, the problem is that it's quite difficult to apply the same uh, idea of a gimbal to the 360 camera because the camera looks in every direction. So you exactly. need to somehow to incorporate the gimbal so that it, it works, but still it's out of sight of the cameras, right? So it basically needs uh, a rhythm rethinking of the the idea of the gimbal. So this is what we did and we succeeded. Uh, we started early on back in 2016. We introduced the first prototype at SVVR show in, uh, in the valley. And uh, I'm happy to say that the media uh, said that that was a great solution. So we, we had a lot of cover press coverage about yeah. that. So we were the first to sort of uh, draw attention to this problem, right? But that uh, solution wasn't camera agnostic. So we understood that we need to do something to make sure that we satisfy the demand of, uh, of the industry. So we created this camera agnostic solution that now works with uh, all professional, really heavy, big cameras. And we can uh, move the cameras with amazing speeds of up to, up to 25 miles per hour. Can you imagine that? With full hardware stabilization. So you don't need any software yeah. stabilization. You get absolutely crystal clear picture smooth movement and uh, then it goes back to the creative application of that so right. you can now follow your character you can uh, draw the attention of the viewer you can you can actually apply this to storytelling right because uh, one of the storytelling techniques it's either the sound cues or the camera movement mm -hmm. Right. So this is all now becoming uh, available for 360 content producers, which now, is great. Now, the footprint, as we see down here, it, it gets larger, right? So how do you remove this in post-production? This is something you have to do in post-production, I would imagine, right? Where you have to remove this. Well, yeah. So as, as you can see, this camera doesn't have the uh, A downward the facing. Bottom. Yeah, that's right. So it was the same with the previous uh, model of this, which was Google uh, Odyssey, right? Mm -hmm. So the footprint is the is the uh, blind spot that, that you can see uh, at the bottom of the, of the sphere, right? Yeah. So we designed the rover to fit that uh, um, blind spot perfectly. Got so it. you don't see any rover. Uh, it's just the, the same blind spot that you see if you put the camera on the uh, tripod, right? Right, right. Uh, and then it, it's up to you how you deal with the blind spot. So you either put the logo of the clients, which I don't advise to do. So I'd rather, yeah. we'll, we always try to make the full sphere because that's the, the perfect yeah, yeah. Uh, experience. Because it the breaks viewer. the immersion, the pre exactly. sense of presence, right? Yeah. If you put right. a logo all of a sudden, because I'm walking here, I don't see a logo as I'm walking. Yeah, yeah. so right. the idea is to, of course, to immerse the user as much as possible to make this, this, this that's why it's called virtual reality. Basically. Exactly, right, right, um, that makes sense. So. Um, Let's talk a little bit bigger picture here. Um, what, how do you see virtual reality storytelling? Because there's there is um, 360, then there is cinematic VR, and then there is full interactive VR. You know, using some oh, yeah. sort of engine, right? Unreal yeah. or Unity, whatever. Do you see this continuing on forever, or do you see it all merging together? Uh, well, that's a good question. Uh, it's difficult to say. What uh, I think will happen is, uh, I like the, the, the idea of mixed reality. When right. you, but mixed, by, by mixed reality, I mean when you mix virtual reality with uh, augmented reality. So you add the elements of virtual reality, cinematic virtual reality, yeah. into the augmented world. Right. Which makes uh, amazing sort of, uh, it's it's a completely different experience. Yep. So it's it's in the in the mix of between the realities. Uh, speaking about the CG uh, environments, I would say that I'm not so particularly fascinated about this idea because it's been here for a while. So the the gaming engines have been uh, I don't know for the last uh, decades, right? So we we know what it's like. It's been evolving, and we we know what to expect from this world, but. 
uh, to recreate cinematically the virtual world in full 360, that's the challenge and it's worth uh, doing, absolutely. Yeah. Because once you get the, the viewer into the cinematic world, uh, that's where the, well, the, the magic happens. Definitely, definitely. All right, so if people want to learn more about what you guys do content-wise, hardware-wise, where do you recommend they go? Uh, well, uh, I would uh, ask them to go to sferka.com. So okay. we uh, we have lots of uh, so we have profiles for every um, project we've been working on for. Yeah, the last there's a lot of cool projects. I was checking them out. Very yeah. cool stuff. Thank you. Thank you very yeah. much. So we've been very busy for the last two years. We still continue doing amazing projects. Uh, I can say that we never did any project without moving the camera since early 2015. Right. So that's what we, that's what uh, differentiates us. Yeah. Cool. All right, Nick, it was a pleasure speaking with you. Thank you Thank so you much, Marcelo. sir, and good luck Thank on you. all your projects. Good luck to you. Thank, Thank you very you. much. Thank you. All right, I'm here with Andy in NAB 2018, and Andy, you're with Mixcast. We are Blueprint Reality out of Vancouver. Uh, got it. And our, Mixcast is? Our SDK software product. Got it. So tell us about the product which people are kind of seeing, and we're already green screened out, even though there's no green screen here. We're already in a virtual experience right now. Basically, our SDK live composites video into a VR scene. Got it. Now, a VR scene meaning like if I'm in a, let's say I'm in in, uh, in a game right now or, or whatever in VR. Yep. And I've got, what kind of camera do you need? Uh, we support any web camera up to broadcast quality. Okay. Right now, we're using the Intel RealSense depth camera. We're do, you, do you need a depth camera? or If you don't want to use a green screen, the, the depth camera is the solution. Got it. But if yeah. you if you have a green screen, then any camera will go. Any camera for the green screen solution. We have multiple methods of background removal, okay. and right now we're showing a closed beta of our depth camera uh, with uh, with our Intel partners. We love those guys. Got it. And then, so what's what what do you use this for? Uh, so this can be a way to portray what is happening in a VR scene without having the headset on. So, you know, you can make trailers of your games to, to, to show on, you know, traditional flat screen media. Right. Um, there are educational use cases. Uh, right now we're targeting LBE VR arcades, people in groups in a giant VR warehouse running around. We'll install the Intel cameras and then they can come out of the experience and say, wow, that's footage of actually me in the VR experience. The VR experience I right. love that. And now I can share it on, on uh, media, on social media. Um, we also offer live streaming during the, d d during the scene. And then we also real-time capture audio and video. Got it. So then your audience, when they're looking at you and they're looking at you doing all this kind of stuff, they can actually see what you're actually doing all the and why you're, you're doing that. You're in the scene. You, you see the props right. in the, in the right. actor's hand. Like we're in the scene right there, right? Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So it's uh, it's quite interesting if I am here, right? And I step back, the depth camera will no longer see me and I'm still here. Yeah. But yep. It's uh, it's quite an intense technology. And you need Steam VR to run this? No, what we're doing is supporting Unity as a game engine right now. Got it. By the end of the month, we'll be supporting Unreal. All right. And we are supporting hardware uh, is the Vive, the Oculus Rift, and Windows Mixed Reality headsets currently. We're looking toward AR headsets and other more high-res headsets as well. So if you currently support only Unity, um, that means that not every app out there will be supported to do this, correct? Correct. It all depends on what the VR content creator is doing. So it's their choice to make the content, what the background, what the VR looks like, and we're enabling them to be able to create content that isn't just headset-based. I see. And what's the cost of this? Uh, we have uh, subscription-based tiers on the website at mixcast.me. Okay. And you know our price points are very, relatively inexpensive. I think they go from forty-nine dollars to two ninety-nine. 
per year. Oh wow, that is yeah. pretty inexpensive. It's, yeah, we're, uh, we just want to get people out there and empowered to use the content creation. Right, and this you, you were mentioning the, the focus is um, training or LBE? LBE mostly right now, but we've had a lot of people come by from education. Yeah. Uh, we're talking to different uh, medical verticals as well. Sure, I could see that used big time in medical. Completely. Yeah. We have uh, deep roots in game development, but you know, we're not even sure what applications our technology can be used in, which is why we're out talking to as many different people as right. possible right. and just trying to riff and, and see what, what people want to create and totally. how we can help them out. Yeah, yeah, totally. So if people want to find out more about Mixcast, where do they go? They go to mixcast.me and all the media and what it is and what we do and all the pricing and tiering are, are all right there. They're all there. Yep. Andy, pleasure to meet you. Thank, Thank you, you so much. much. Appreciate it. Take it easy. Well, welcome to the podcast again. I'm here with Lara Haves, mm -hmm. and you are with Sunny Boy Entertainment. Is yes, that correct? Absolutely. In, Pasadena. in Pasadena, we were just talking about that. Yeah. I grew up in Pasadena, uh -huh. um, so you're here in Vegas now. I grew up now. in Pasadena too. Which Did I you really? Oh, oh wow! Yeah, I was born in Pasadena too. Well, so what I high school did you go to? I didn't go to high school. I moved when I was like five, so uh, I went to Mayfield. Okay, but, all right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so, very yeah. cool. Small world, right? <laughs> Small world, right? I know, yeah, and for we're sure. meeting here in Vegas. And here we are in Vegas, right? At any so. So you guys do, what do you guys do? Tell us about what you guys we do. We are an independently owned and operated VR studio. Okay. We work with brands, particularly um, the entertainment brands, so Warner Brothers, Universal, Fox, and we've been helping them create and conceive and execute on uh, creating bar VR experiences for audiences around um, some of the, their major properties. So um, let's talk about VR experiences. When you yeah. say VR experiences, because a lot of people use VR as a general term. Yeah. Right, 360, they call it VR. Yeah. And, yeah there's a variety. So when you say VR experience, explain what you mean by that. Um, I think VR experience uh, for, for, for me is primarily like headset, headset right. experience where you can throw somebody into a world where they're completely immersed, right. um, whether it be, um, you know, for some of our pieces are behind the scenes. So we put people on the set of Star Wars right. or Greatest Showman. We also create complete CG worlds as well. So like okay. for the movie It, we created the, the two VR experiences, one that opened up in the theatrical release, which, which was It Float. Okay. And that was uh, where we took people and put them in the world of the sewers um, where Pennywise was going after them. And mm -hmm. then we did part two, which was uh, Escape from Pennywise, okay. which was then they wake up after, where, leave off where Float ends, right. and they're in the Niebold house, and they have to escape Pennywise. Right. And it, that one's more interactive, and they can choose which paths to go to try to get out of the house. And that one was available for the desktop headsets, or mainly for the phone headsets? Um, that one is available iOS, Android, um, Daydream, and Gear. Got it. It's mostly the mobile headsets. Yeah, mostly the mobile, yeah, right. for sure. Um, what's your take on, so we have 360 video, we have cinematic VR, mm -hmm. and then we have full and interactive. Right. Well, number one, what do you guys find most fun working or, or creating, and yeah. what do you find also the demand is out there for? Right. Um, it's hard to say what's most fun because, you know, it really depends on what story is you want to tell and finding what the right way to tell that is mm -hmm. um, and within the parameters that you have. We also, we not only do branded VR experience, but we also create original uh, VR experiences, some right. original titles. So um, we're excited about those. We have a VR game that's going to be coming out at the end of this month, our first VR game. So we're excited oh. about that as well. Cool. But back to your question. Um, uh, what, what, what do we find the most? I mean, w at our heart, we're storytellers. Right. And we feel like before medium, it's, it, it comes down to story. Like, can we tell a story? And what's the best way to tell the story? Right. And that kind of directs how we, how we go about executing. Um, so at our heart, we're storytellers and we're filmmakers. Mm -hmm. And um, so I would say, you know, the cinematic VR experience is kind of where we're at. You know, I guess I'll speak for myself. I think that's the most compelling. There's something about it being, you know, being an art form in some way. Mm -hmm. um, we were actually just talking about how cinematic VR is uh, somewhat of oxymoron, right? Because right. cinematic and VR is right. a little bit different. But the idea right. is that it's that it's in its scope and scale, and that there's right. that there is that, that right. more right. rather than experience. So, do you see that there's going to come a point where um, cinematic VR um, or 360 video will take over standard 2D, or do you see it just as another extra medium? Yeah, it's interesting. Um, you know, you don't know for sure. Um, I do see it's going to be a different medium, and right. I do think it's going to take over more right. than what we see right now. Right. I think the, the, the key to that is going to be getting um, the tools into the hands of 
the masses to be creators, right? right? right. And that, as well as getting into the hands of the, uh, the, the masses, headsets to experience things as right. well. My favorite moment is when you, first mm -hmm. time you see somebody experience being right. in VR. Exactly. It's like their, it was their life before VR and the life right. you know, <laughs> after. Because it's, it's, it's like, to see them just genuinely like, wow, wow. Like they really right. are like amazed by that, what that experience is. And, if it was more readily accessible, people are, are going to want more and they're going to be moving more into it. Mm -hmm. um, and so I think we are going to find that it's going to become more widely spread. Well, and it's interesting you said that because I, I was the same way. It was my life before VR and uh -huh. then now it's my life with VR and nothing yeah. else, right? But that brings up a, a problem of adoption. It's right. hard to get people to adopt VR because to really understand VR, you have to be in it, yes. right? Even if you see somebody in VR and you watch the 2D display, mm -hmm. that's it's not VR. It and in matter. fact, you'll get sick by watching that, <laughs> right? Because people yeah. are moving yeah, and yeah. the screen jitters and go, oh no, I don't want to do that. So you work with big brands and obviously they have the budget to test things out. Mm -hmm. But do you think there is a problem of adoption right now? And how can we get over that hump to really yeah. get the masses to adopt this? I think right now, this place that we're at in the industry, there's two, there's twofold. First of all, getting the technology into the hands, the devices into right. the hands. I think Oculus Go is gonna be a game changer. Right, I agree. And it's, it's a price point that people can uh, accept. Yeah, 199 I 199 mean, you don't need cords, wires, you don't need a phones. mobile phone. Right. You can just, if I, like, I wanna go home and I wanna do some virtual reality. When I get home, I just put right. on that headset and I can go. Right. Um, and that, I think, is gonna be a game changer, getting it into, to, to make it go wide stream. Right. And then the other thing is that to continue for money to flow into content creation. Mm -hmm. We are just scratching the surface yeah. of what we can do in VR. Right. And content creators uh, were just itching to keep playing, right. you know. And it, the, you know, we've, the, the industry has felt a little slowdown of the money mm -hmm. coming through. Mm -hmm. And, you know, but to be able to keep creating content and keep pushing the limits of both that, the, the, the creative and the innovation, right. to keep pushing the limits so that the experiences mm -hmm. that people have then aren't um, the same old, same old, right. that they keep getting to be more expansive, more immersive, and more powerful, right. it's only going to make people want to want to dive in and come right. back for more. Right. Well, yeah. from a cinematic point of view, I mean, we're at the point where you just put the camera and let things happen. We have to move beyond that for mm -hmm. this to really take off, right? Yes. Would you agree with that? Yes. Yeah, yeah. for so sure. So cam more camera movement and interactivity. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Like from a more technical standpoint, yeah, definitely more camera movement, more um, uh, definitely interactivity. Um, I, you know, I'm personally at the. A lot of people really want a lot of interactivity, and I also am personally at the like. Let's not go throw push in interactivity unless it's meant to be there mm -hmm. because sometimes right. it's not meant True. to be there right. or if you don't you know you don't have the budget to support that you right. know to be able to create what actually can, right. can create and again for us it's it's um, there's definitely tools you know like camera moves or audio you know, spatial audio is really important right. in all this and right. how I mean we have a, an amazing spatial art um, audio artist um, we work with spacewalk sound um, okay. and um, that is a key part of that experience, mm -hmm. um, as well as developing what that experience is for audiences as I well, see. too. So, you know, again, it goes back to being storytellers and being like, right. using all the tools available right. to us and continuing to to test new tools right. for how that can be experienced right. by audiences. There's an experience, I don't know if you tried this already, it's an older experience, but it's Apollo 11, mm -hmm. the Apollo 11 experience. And it's, it's, there's two things you can do. Either you can pick a full cinematic VR experience mm -hmm. where you just sit there and watch and it literally you're experiencing going to the moon, yeah. starting with the lift off all the way to landing at the moon. But the, you can also do a, a semi-interactive where at certain points during the movie, mm -hmm. you get to take over and control the lander oh, or the lunar cool. lander. Um, and I thought what they've done, I think, is really what cinematic, in my mind, um, cinematic VR is. Yeah. Is where you, you experience it as a movie, but in certain places or certain times, you can be part of that. But yeah. you're not watching it as you watch a traditional movie. You're in the rocket, right. you know, going to the moon. But you're, you only get to watch and experience what they're doing, and they still go through that. Right. So have you had, guys had any experience with sort of mixing things up like that? Oh, yeah, for sure, for yeah. sure. Um, we created a, the It experience for um, the Escape from Pennywise, which actually has been nominated for a Webby Award, right. which we're super excited about. Great. Um, yeah, That's thank great. you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Vote, everybody vote. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, that one is, is a mixture, a little bit of a mixture too, but it, you, you choose the ride you want to go right. on, right? right? And then we take them on, on that, right. that right. ride. Yeah. Um, but what I think it's interesting about what you're saying, though, is it clues into that it's that, it's that um, 
you know, cluing into how do you create these experiences where you choose when when to choose to allow them people to be a part of right. it in their right. own like choices and their actions. I mean, if you see these LBEs that are popping up and right. the Star Wars experience, that you experience yeah. that. Now, yeah, they just opened it up in Glendale. Glendale, I know. Yeah. I just I would end up there on opening on opening night. Did you? Yeah. Did you like it? Oh my God, it was it's fantastic. I was going to go to the it's downtown fantastic. Disney, never got a chance, but now it's next it's exactly to where what I work. So yeah. yeah, when I heard it opened up, I was like, this is going to be better, and I'll, right. and I'll go back because it's definitely agency. Like uh, you get to be, you are part of it, and you're part of a team. And there's a, there's definitely it's it, you're not sitting back and watching. You're definitely yeah. part of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah definitely. Yeah. Have you watched Ready Player One? Yes. Okay. So, yes. do you see? Well, not the negative part yeah. of, of the movie, but do you see the Oasis as the future? Uh, it definitely is potential for that. Yeah. I mean, whether it's going to be that um, that extreme, mm -hmm. it, you know, time will tell. I think there's a part of human beings that definitely want to get immersed and taken away into worlds. Mm -hmm. But I think there's also a part of people who want to also be grounded in, right. in real life. But... Um, I do think that what the great thing about Ready Player One is, I mean, we talk about like what's going to help this make go mainstream and to the masses. I think movies like that right. are important right. um, to, because it all of a sudden shows what this virtual reality experience is. Mm -hmm. It brings people into the experience and, and it, it becomes something that they can understand. Like you said, you right. know, it's not like just watching somebody in a headset. You're like, I don't get right. that. Right. It's putting the headset on. It makes you understand exactly. it and understanding how people yeah. can immer and you know create lives and worlds around it, right. even if it's a story world. Right. Um, right. I, so I think that that, that movie is also going to help in yeah. a lot of capacities but are we going there it's possible i mean we're kind of there tell. with the phones people are already yeah. you know uh, addicted and they live in their phones so. in the social and social and social media sites it's people social. who go are constantly going to social back to social media sites to get the dopamine hit and to connect with their friends and i mean i, I hear people hook up and break up in social yeah. media <laughs> <laughs> they do they do they do so they you know do. i can't i could see my kids kids not knowing the difference between reality and and virtual reality at that point Who's going to know the difference? Yeah. Well, I think that's why it's important. Um, personally, I think it's important as far as like when we introduce VR to kids and stuff too, right. just to help get their cognitive development going and right. stuff like that. Right. So, Definitely. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, how do you see VR in the next I don't know five years? Let's say, or uh, how would you like to see it? Because how do how do you see it? It's kind of yeah, hard to. It is. You know, particularly. With but how would you like to see yeah. it? What would you like to see um, happen? You know, I'd love to see more people have a chance to experience it. It's what's so exciting about being a VR producer right now mm -hmm. is the potential. There's so much more to play with and create and right. to explore. Right. And with every day new technology comes out, the brain and body um, connections between uh, the technology and stuff right. that can change the VR experience. Right. Um, that stuff's exciting for me, like right. to be able to like be agents from using my mind. Mm -hmm. I mean, that just blows me away. Yeah. You know, so that sort of stuff that I'm excited to play around with and explore to be able to create worlds for people to um, explore using all these new technologies. That and then seeing to come. you seeing them play in your world must give you like a huge high. Oh, it's great. It's like so fun. Like when you fun. see them react and scream or whatever. Oh my gosh, it's so fun. Yeah. It's so fun. It's, yeah. it's one of the best parts actually about the VR. Right. Thing. Yeah, I can yeah, see that. For sure. Well, if people want to find out more about the company? Sunnyboyentertainment.com. Okay. And keep an eye out for Humble Pie, which is releasing later this month. Okay. Um, it's our first VR game. And cool. it is an opportunity to throw pies at particular public figures who may need to be humbled. <laughs> and we have uh, our first oh, candidate uh, is somebody who lives in the Oval Office right now. Okay, so yeah, well, I figured that. So we, so we, but That's he's, he's the first of a, a line of them that are going to Are you going to be able to pick? who you want to? Um, right now, we're, you're just going to be able to experience one, the but one, but as the game progresses, you'll be able to experience awesome. more. And it'll be yeah. available on... On Steam. On Steam. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Well, Lara, great to meet you. Oh, thank so you so nice much. It was a pleasure you. speaking yeah, with you. Yeah, thank you so much for having Appreciate me. Appreciate it. Yeah. I hope you enjoyed my interviews at NAB 2018. If you did, please remember to subscribe, leave a comment, and like us on iTunes or SoundCloud. For more episodes, check out howtocreatevr.com slash iTunes or howtocreatevr.com slash SoundCloud. If you are ever in the Southern California area, we have a monthly meetup with lots of great presentations. You can join or RSVP for our next meetup at howtocreatevr.com slash meetup. Finally, if you are interested in learning more about how to create VR experiences, please visit howtocreatevr.com. So until the next episode, I'm your host, Marcella Lewin. Cheers, everyone.